dive into the elephant in the room that has kind of been around the channel for quite a while. Uh, you know, I make a lot of commentary videos on this channel and one in particular came out on top for the controversial take that I had on it. And that happened to be on Baldur's Gate 3. When I dove into that video, it was about the sales numbers and how Hasbro likes to hide the sales numbers. But a lot of people, you know, and this is something that continued on with this game is the narrative that was shaped around the game. My issues with the game was that the franchise is generally made for teenagers, uh, very, very young adults, uh, and not so much a mature style of audience. It was one of these games that I grew up with as, as a kid. Uh, it was one of those games or that franchise that I felt how really resonated with a lot of D&D players. Now with the new version of Baldur's Gate 3 that came out from Larian Studios, the layoffs that followed, the, the disparaging on how many games were sold, how where it sat there on top 10 lists, how many awards the game was, it, it, it's a glaring thing in my face, and I have to say, it's something that I still, to this day, hold against the game. I, I believe the marketing strategies behind the game was not something that drew me into the game, and I felt was a very disadvantaged version of the game. Recently, I've been posed with several people asking the questions, still have a disparaging take on Baldur's Gate 3. We're going to get in that, into that today because I think there's a lot that I have to discuss why I still, to this day, do not believe Baldur's Gate 3 is a game that deserved all the recognition that it got. In this process, I caught the ire of the one Sid Alpha, you know, someone that I actually thought that I would try and reach out long before all of this has happened with a bit of a history between myself and Sid Alpha. It, it, you know, I've spoken to the guy uh, long before I put that video out there. This was never about Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, it wasn't about Larian Studios. It's more about Hasbro and uh, them being a company that sits there and hides actual data and actual numbers and a very scuzzy version of Wizards of the Coast. Everything I've seen with the company is some drags down video gaming and this type of game. Now the disparaging side of where the marketing aspect went to uh, very furry sex in front of a large crowd that was a shock to a lot of people and was more that shock jockey style of marketing material to put it out there on the internet. That's where I have problems with this game. It was something that was put out there as a shock and awe content. And it was something that originally was marketed to teenagers, not marketed to adults. Um, the game later did receive the mature rating in that sense, but it was never designed for that from my understanding. That, that's the way I look at it. The franchise was never about being a mature game. Now you have people that will sit there and speed run on how fast you can have sex in the game. They have updates to the game where they've added jiggle physics to your dick and balls. These are not normal things you see in gaming. Uh, it, by any means is this normal. This is something that is very disturbing uh, and is not something that I believe was something that was meant for the style of game. Early access in 2020. This is a game that took three years to come out fully released. A lot of people, I mean a lot of people bought into the early access because it was a Baldur's Gate 3 title or Baldur's Gate uh, IP. And that was what dropped and drew the initial startup capital for this game was people wanted a Baldur's Gate 3 game. Now we come full circle and you have what's come out. You have Baldur's Gate 3 and from the development lead time from when it started back in 2020 to when it was released in August 2023, the game had completely changed from what it was. It was something that they have now added sex and romance and full-on nudity, full-on uh, a lot of things that honestly for a the game of its time that originally was marketed as a game for teenagers was something more. It, it, it became 
an essence of itself and no longer was it the the original game that a lot of people bought into and we th this is these are things that we have talked about on the channel we've talked about with like sony removing skins from games censorship from games these weren't the games or the idea that was once was and that's kind of the same thing that i am going through here on the channel i'm not who i was yesterday but i am still who i am today it, it, it's something that has continued it's still a Baldur's gate franchise but it is turned into something more and it's more for the check mark uh out there for the journalist to be happy it, it caught the ire of every award out there and it, it's one of, it's hailed one of the most awarded titles out there in its time but i still have my my gripes about the game because it was marketed as a sexy dungeon style game instead of a, a dungeon diver style game with magic swords and sorcery it was marketed for sexiness over what the game was and these have been tenets of things that people have disparaged against for a very long time. Baldur's Gate 3. The engine was Divinity Engine, which is something that was already programmed once. Uh, and then it was pretty much reused uh, into the new combat system for the game. So what made it really that much difference? Was it the fact that it got marketed as a, a teenager game into a more of a sexy, lustous, style of game or was it something that they they programmed in so much more dialogue into the game that you your choices mattered in the game and is that what keeps people playing this game today i'm not sure it's not a game that i hail or want to even play uh because i believe the marketing behind it was something that was disparagings i've gone through ups and downs in this last couple weeks and i still hold my spot with Baldur's Gate 3. I still hold it uh, as a very negative game uh, in something, in a space that could have been a lot greater because I don't believe it was marketed very well. Uh, I believe they could have done a lot better with it. And talking with people, they say it's a, very, it's a good game, but ultimately it comes down to it was the Divinity Sin game um, that was just rehashed and remade into a Baldur's Gate title integrating the Dungeons and Dragons system with uh, dice rolling and uh, critical failures and, and amazing result and critical wins. That's where the game sat. Did I read the room wrong? Did I do something wrong saying I don't like these things? Because that's something I don't like. It's not something that makes me happy. It's not something that I enjoyed. Did I read the room wrong that the numbers of the situation was out there being hailed as one of the big, biggest things out there in the world uh, when it when the numbers were hidden and not known? Did I read the room wrong when I sat there and did some basic napkin math? I don't know. Uh, I, I believe everything that I said with the game at that time was very sound. There was conjecture, yes, from Sid Alpha, and I believe he tried to make a few good points, and I don't really, his video to me today is still very forgettable. I don't remember much of it at this point, and nor do I care. Uh, I, I think this is something I can put easily behind me, because Baldur's Gate 3, a lot of people are still playing it today, and that's great. Still enjoy the game. I, I, I'm glad people do enjoy video games, uh, and they can still find solace in a game like that and actually find enjoyment out of it. I don't find enjoyment out of it. I'm not going to believe I'm ever going to go into a game like that. There's just way too much dialogue to go through. Like the, the, This is where I sit there and I look at it. You've got thousands of lines of dialogue you have thousands of lines from a voice actor group you have voice actors that actually did a soap opera show uh move into this type of space just to voice it and then you go into the romance and the nakedness and it, it no longer became a game about swords and sorcery and it became more of a meme of being able to play this type of game is it still one of the best games out there of 2023 well it sure seems that way because it's still on top 
but say la vie. It is what it is. I can live with it and I don't care. I enjoyed myself this last week. I've enjoyed a lot of things in this last week and I've actually, it's brought a smile on my face. And to look back at Baldur's Gate 3, look at back at those videos, I'm still, I can still stand here and say what I said in those videos, I still stand by. At the time that I made those videos, the numbers weren't real. The numbers weren't actually out there. And when you did the math, it didn't make sense. People lost their jobs over that game. Larian Studios still made money. Hasbro still fired people over that game. And there's still nowhere near a sequel on the horizon. Anyway, I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix Sinner Shadow signing off here. Have yourselves a great day and you know, I'm a sucker for punishment for this one. I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.